Hi, I'm Terry Murphy, Senior Editor for Realty Times Women in Business, Women in Real Estate in the Men's Room with Murph. And I'm also the founder of the Women's Wisdom Network. And why that's important here today is because I have a, an enormously talented woman in uh Women's Wisdom Network. She's been a longtime friend. Her name is Connie Myers. And Connie is a crisis management specialist. No, not when something happens in your kitchen, when things really happen in the world. Uh, she is a uh, uh, a leadership clarity strategist and spent 40 years supporting individuals and businesses, basically has uh, authored a couple of books and more to come. I want to welcome you, Miss Connie. Thank you so much, Terry, for having me. This is so much fun. I just really enjoy talking with you. Well, you know, as we do too, and here's the thing, as a resource center, which is what we are for Women's Wisdom Network and for Realty Times, crisis is a real thing and nobody gets a practice. Crisis happens. Uh, and yes, we have preparedness, and you've written other books on that. Your newest one, When the Unthinkable Happens, uh, Be Prepared, Be Ready, is your newest book, which is why we're here today. But tell us about your first book. My very first book was Crystalline Moments. Crystalline means sparkly or clear. So crystalline moments are moments of clarity. And I wrote it right after my husband passed away because that was a major crystalline moment. My entire life changed at that point in time. I always tell people that um, the, the book and everything that come, come past his passing, uh, I wouldn't be where I am today if he hadn't passed. It's the greatest gift he ever gave me. We, we celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary uh, four days before he passed, and it was beautiful. So I wrote Crystalline Moments to show people that there's always a gift or an opportunity in anything. And what we're going to be talking about today are major crystalline moments because, and we have those moments every single day and they really guide us into the direction of where we're going to go. Well, you, uh, you've taken national home uh, inspection companies uh, to national presence. I mean, you've, this work is really diligent. It's very hyper-local. Um, you, you have your own group, CKM Solutions Group as crystalline a moment success movement uh, and kick butt leadership. You're an awfully busy little overachiever, by the way. But um, I want people to know about this book because it, the target market is quite varied. Why don't you tell us who you had in mind when you wrote it? Well, the, the, the book is actually the finally the fruition of a book that I wanted to write. I was a fame inspector and trainer for seven years. And during that period of time, I realized there was so much that consumers and businesses didn't know about what to do when there was some kind of a disaster, whether it was man-made or natural, it really didn't matter. They just didn't know what to do with it. So it's been in my brain since the, the early to mid nineties. So it's a book that's it's taken a few years to come around, but I wrote the book, it's primarily for consumers and businesses. However, it is also wants to make a difference in their community. Anybody that works with the public, so like real estate agents, insurance people uh, that wanna, wanna give back to their community at the same time. This is a great book to, be able to give back and, and truly make a difference because we are in dire need of preparedness out there. It's just not happening. And the FEMA and their, they have a website called ready.gov that gives out all kinds of information. It just doesn't get drilled down to the people that nearly need to have it, the people that are living in different communities. We don't think about a crisis. We're all stuck in our daily routines and then something happens. I mean, just think about something as simple as, you know, uh, high winds knock down power and all of a sudden you're dealing with other priorities the freezer you know the kids oh by the way your hair you know your hair dryer doesn't work i mean these are tiny and, and not meant to be disrespectful but preparedness can help save lives and resources um, and you talk as a female inspector and trainer what was the one thing that you saw it needed to be that people needed to know most about these disasters and the preparedness that could help them shift well, I think uh, we see it every time there is a disaster on TV. Uh, you see people that will say after they've lost their home or something, they'll go, oh, my God, I don't know what I'm going to do. I've lost everything. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. And then you have others that say, I've lost my home, but I'm here. I can rebuild. It really, the, the most important thing is mindset and a resilient mindset where you build back better. And if you talk to people that have been through disasters, uh, first responders, 
they all tell you how critically important it is to know what to do with the brain because, and that all boils down to preparedness. Whether you've got your emergency kits, whether you've got your plans, do you know how to evacuate? Do you know what you're going to do? Because then you go into auto, automatic mode. You, you're not trying to think. And I have a really good story about that. So a good friend of mine, uh, she was born and raised in Malibu. And her, her, she also had a real estate company in Malibu. And she lived with her husband there and a couple of kids. Well, when the Malibu fires came through, it, they were headed in a certain direction. And so they took out her family home where her mom still lived. Uh, some of the agents in her office lost their homes or had problems badly damaged. But the fire was going this way, away from where she and her husband lived. So they thought they were okay. In the middle of the night, they got a knock on the door that said they had 15 minutes to get out. And she said she took half of that time spinning around in a circle, not knowing what to take. And when they got to the shelter, she had little girls that were like four and six at the time. She had brought nothing for her little girls. And that's how critically important. If you don't have in mind what you're going to do and, and have everything in place, then you don't know. Another really good example is my partner went through a minor little earthquake in, in Woodland Hills just a couple months ago. And because of the work we're doing, she had her shoes by the bed. She said, and she says, normally I would jump up, run around in a circle trying to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing. But she, jumped, she put her shoes on and got to the door where her kit was and she had her kit in hand. The good news is the earthquake went away. She didn't have to go out the door, but she, she had it and she was ready. So it was automatic. And that's what we're looking for. We want to be like a first responder, which by the way, first responders are us and our neighbors. It's not the police. It's not the firemen. Sometimes it takes them 24 to 48 hours. So that's another critical reason why you want to be prepared. And that's probably one of the reasons you decided to write the book because yeah, like you said, there's probably multiple um, opportunities or options online for the government, whatever. But real life, I mean, something like having your shoes. I just went through a minor earthquake. It was very exciting uh, for the five seconds it lasted. But, you know, we, we just assume everything's going to roll like it is right now. And guess what? It doesn't always. And it, I want to be very careful here that we're not creating any kind of fear or pan, you know, pandemonium about having a, a, a kit. But you make really good sense with that. Um, you know, just even if it just happens to, you know, that you, whether you're traveling even, you know, and you have your medications or you have all the numbers or that kind of thing. I mean, we, we've we seen people. Oh, I, I think having the right. Uh oh. Yeah, repeat that. Wait a minute, three. Okay, sorry. No, said, three. No, I'm going to start over. You know what? I think it's my network here. Hold on a second. No, yeah, you're good now. Oh, okay. I, I think I had something on or something. Do you have um? Do you have an Eros uh, or anything like that? Uh, let me. Is it 35? Hang on. Just want to make a note. Uh, we're not recording right now. Um, and I think, uh, Connie, that's why it's so important to have, and not not in a fear mode, but in a preparedness uh, mode to have a kit. Tell us what you think people should include in that kit. Well, first of all, uh, everybody thinks that they need to have a kit. In reality, you need to have uh, four kits and possibly more, depending upon your situation. Uh, the first kit, the number one thing that people don't think about putting in their kit, people think about water and they think about food and they might think about a flashlight and a radio, but they don't think about having cash. And the number one thing you need to have in that kit is cash. And there's a whole list of things, things that people would not even think about. And then depending upon the type of risk that you have, whether you're in California where there's earthquakes or you're living in, in on the East Coast where there's hurricanes or all of those things have special or you're near a chemical plant or, you know, something like that. Those all have specific needs. But the first kit you need to have is your general kit. And the one thing you don't want to forget are pictures and any really, really uh, heirlooms of things that really mean a lot to you. One of the very first disasters I did was in Central California. It was a flood. And I drove up to this house and it was, a, he had to be in his mid eighties and he's sitting on his porch and he's holding what looks like just a bunch of old wood. And I come driving up and he's in tears. I get out of the car, I introduce myself. And I said, how can I help you? And he held up this wood and he said, this was my grandfather's toolkit. And it was just a pile of wood. So 
anything of real sentimental value. If you if it's too big to put in a kit, figure out what you're going to do with it. But that's least, so that's your general well, kit, or at least where it is, so you don't have to go. Gee, I wonder if it's in the garage or the attic. Um, right. So is that in the book? With that, you have a list of. Uh, is that yes. in the book as well? Yes. So th the book was written for everyone who especially those people that you said would be the first type of responders. I mean, I know agents uh, in the Adela, the Houston area that brought water, you know, because they, their kids had one of those big trucks, trucks, you know, that were real high and, and brought water to people because people didn't have, you know, fresh water. Um, the people are going to want to take certain things away from the book. Again, we're talking to Connie Myers, founder of crystalline moments and cake butt leadership and her new book, uh, when the unthinkable happens, be ready, be prepared. Being prepared is just flat out cool, okay? It just is. And you never think it's gonna to happen to you, but what if it did? And how can you be ready without being you know, living in fear or focusing on that? And so there are five things you want people to take away from the book. Give me like two or three of them so people have an idea of why they need to read this book. Well, I think first of all, in the book, I talk about all the different kits and things that you need to have. And, and the plans that you need to collect, there's questions in there that say, okay, what is your evacuation plan, that kind of thing. So that, I think that's the, the most important. But also, um, if you are a small business or you need to have a crisis team, and even if you're a one person business, you need to form a team so that you can keep your business going because FEMA has a very alarming statistic, 75% of all businesses that are affected by some kind of a disaster or crisis will not be in business in two years if they don't have a plan. So you need to have a team that knows what they're doing. And for that's for businesses, for individuals, you need to make sure that everybody knows the, the communication plan. So those are, those are really key elements. And then what about leadership? Who's going to, who's going to be in charge? Let's talk about your business for a second. If you might be a fantastic, motivating type of person running a sales team or something like that, but you may not be the right person to lead your crisis team. If you have problems making decisions, if you have problems doing problem solving, if you are not aware, um, if you're not, if you don't maybe have some of the, the construction type skills or knowledge, those that makes that kind of disqualifies you as being a good leader for a team or leading your emergency plan and then really strong communication talk to us a little bit about communication you said a communication plan does that mean i mean obviously if it's a big disaster cell phones are out um phones are out you know is there like some kind of a special code like let's meet here or talk to so and so or whatever when, when you're talking about your personal life and your family, you need to have, first of all, you decide who's going to call who. And this is a really good time to get your children involved because if they feel like they're a part of the plan, they don't have the fear. So set them up to call grandma and grandpa or, or an aunt or somebody. So they become a part of the communication plan. But know who's going to call who and who you're going to contact if you're not together. So maybe the kids are at school, maybe you're at work. And they need to know who you're going to call. So you have an outside person that you call. And then you always have around your home two places to meet. And a really good idea is to make sure you let the fire department close by to you know where you're meeting. And if there's anybody that has special needs, like maybe somebody that's disabled, maybe somebody that's elderly, um, knowing how to communicate and what they need to have and let the firemen know that. So, and then when it comes to your business, okay, so let's say I work a lot with real estate agents. So let's say you're a real estate company. Maybe you're small. Maybe you've got one or two people with you. Um, who's going to talk, contact the clients? Who's going to talk, contact the vendors? Who's going to, who's going to oversee and who's going to take care of the data? How are you going to continue your business if you don't have backup vendors and something happens to one of your vendors? All of that is covered in the book and you, you figure out how to put these plans together and put them in place. Wow. I mean, that's quite a book, Miss Connie, and I think everybody probably needs to have one. And if you're a real estate agent, you might want to buy a couple for your insurance people and some other of your vendors, because if you're all on the same page, all of us is going to be more powerful than one of us, especially when it comes to preparedness. Connie, where can we get this book? It is coming out on Amazon. Um, it will be, it's not available just yet. We'll be announcing the publication, but I am taking pre-orders. 
And so you can reach me on my website, CKM Solutions Group, and do a pre-order and you get special pricing. I also have special bonuses for people that purchase the book early. They get, uh, I do a monthly training on specific types of disasters. So like last month was fires, the month before it was heat waves, the month we've done, I've done hurricane stuff, drought. Um, you get a choice of three of those course, courses that you can take as a bonus. So uh, there's information on the website to pre-order the book. And when it comes out, it will be available on Amazon. Okay, so that was, you went a little fast. So it was CKM, Cat Solutions. Kitchen, Emma's and Mary Solutions Group, correct? Yes, dot com. Okay, so we need to get this book. And I know you're going to be visiting us again because, because you just can't sit around. Uh, you're writing uh, literally a series of books on each disaster, which we can share with our um, our viewers uh, pretty much every month on a regular basis. So I hope you'll join us again. And thank you so much for your great work and your training and your passion for preparedness. Uh, I'm Terry Murphy with the Women's Wisdom Network. Thank you, Ms. Connie Myers, for all you, you give to so many. And thank we'll you. hope you'll join us again next time for another segment on Realty Times News.